Hi, everybody. My name is Darren Oberst. I'm the CEO of AI Blocks, uh, and I'm excited um, in this tutorial to walk you through a topic that we've been working on in our lab over the last few months. Um, as we've been doing a lot of work uh, with RAG, Retrieval uh, Augmented Generation, one of the most common questions that we get, um, especially from the developer community, but from clients and partners as well, is basically, what is the smallest possible LLM um, that I can use and get some reasonably effective results um, with RAG on? Uh, we've had great success uh, with models in the 7 billion to 13 billion um, parameter range, but those are models that typically do require a GPU inference. And so the question um, that we wanted to ask is, is it possible and what is the real state of the art in running um, CPU-based LLMs in, in a RAG-based process? Now, why would anybody be interested in doing this? Well, it tends to come up for several uh, several specific reasons. The first is that RAG use cases oftentimes involve sensitive private data, um, whether it's uh, financial information, legal and contractual information, in some cases medical and health information or other PII, but it's information that you wanna keep under wraps, um, especially as you're developing a RAG system. The second thing is that a lot of the RAG use cases involve some form of key value extraction or question answering that tend to be a very specialized application of an LLM. Third, businesses are looking to integrate um, the LLM and, and a RAG into an enterprise process, really deep into the automation flow of a company. And so really thinking about a model that can be deployed um, on-prem or in a private cloud that can be customized and that can really be owned by the enterprise as part of this process. But one of the biggest reasons in the way that we tend to use it um, you know, in, in our own work is really for testing and experimentation. Um, I think when it comes to RAG, there's so much um, uh, open-ended experimentation, innovation. Will this work? Could it fit for this use case? And we actually find having some CPU-based models is just a fantastic tool for that rapid prototyping, testing, and experimentation, even if ultimately you're going to swap those models out for much, much larger models when you move into production. So getting started um, in this tutorial, um, there are really two prerequisites um, if you want to follow along. The first is a, a pip install of LLMware. Uh, LLMware is a framework for developing um, enterprise-based um, you know, LLM applications. You can also check it out at the GitHub page, um, LLMware-AI. The second um, key dependency is uh, to pip install Transformers, um, which is the much beloved and famous library um, from Hugging Face. Um, we're actually gonna be pulling down some models um, from the Hugging Face repository. Um, again, you could check them out and get more information in our Hugging Face repo at LLMware um, slash uh, bling. Um, and again, I would really encourage you, we're going to move through the example pretty quickly, but we would encourage you, um, all the sample code um, is in our GitHub repo. We'd encourage you to pull down that code and, and you can spend some time with it in more depth. Before we look at the code, um, this is actually a, a fairly simple experiment, um, but what we're really going to try to do is three objectives. First, uh, we want to introduce the Bling models, which are one to three billion parameter models uh, that we've gone through a pretty meticulous set of RAG fine tuning. Um, they're all available on Hugging Face. There are eight models available and they work on top of most of the leading model bases that have been put out um, in that size range. Also with the potential then to scale as so you want to start looking at 7 billion, 13 billion, and 20 billion parameter versions of those same models. We're going to show you how you can pull these models down um, from Hugging Face, start running them locally, and then actually see the models and the results in action. Again, the last thing we would say before we start to look at the code, these are experimental models. Um, like any model, models will make mistakes. We are going to try to show that in the test results. Um, but what we would always encourage is really think about the fit of a model to a particular use case, really verify and validate the results to make sure that it is fit for purpose um, for whatever activity you're looking at. So with that, um, let us go ahead and let's dive straight into the code. Um, what I'm going to show you here, this is actually the entire script um, that is available um, in our GitHub repo that you can pull down. Um, there's a set of sample questions. Each sample question has a query. It has a context passage that's going to be passed to the LLM, and then it has a gold answer um, that we're going to use for comparison just in the, in the output. All of the samples, again, you can go through them in more depth, but they've been adapted from real-life things, um, typically from either financial news, 
uh, kind of Wall Street information, earnings releases, um, or uh, things that we've pulled um, out of contracts, the kinds of questions that we typically get um, for RAG use cases. As you can see, they're, they're not the simplest, they're not the most complex. We tried to pick just a reasonable mix of context passages and questions to give a, a representative view of how the model was performing. Um, the second thing is you actually have a list here. These are the eight Bling models that are available that have all been um, RAG trained and you know RAG instruct trained on these per types of, of fact-based Q&A and information retrieval. Um, you can see we're actually going to show you just the smallest model today, which is a 1 billion parameter Bling. It goes all the way up to um, a 2.8 billion uh, parameter model. In the script, um, all we're going to do, um, we're going to pull in our questions. We're then going to load uh, the model, and then we're just going to run through a loop. And in the course of the loop, um, we're going to call the model. The model will be running locally um, on my laptop, a Mac M1. Um, and then we're just going to print out the output. So let's take a look. Now, the first time you pull the model down from Hacking Face, it's probably going to take a couple of minutes as it's downloaded and cached locally. Once it's cached locally, though, each follow-up time, you'll see, takes about seven or eight seconds for the model to load. And now here we go. Um, the model is off running inferences. And what you can see for each inference, there's the query. There's the LLM response that we got back, again, running locally um, on our machine. There's the gold answer. Um, so you can see anytime the LLM response and gold answer match, that's a good thing. It means that the model got the answer right. And then we're capturing and reporting out all the LLM usage data. Um, you can see the inference time is quite fast um, with a, a billion parameter model um, running on a local GPU. Um, you can also get a view of the input, which is the size of the context that we passed. You'll note it tends to be a little bit smaller. So for the smaller on-prem kind of CPU laptop based models, we've, we've guided all of these contexts between about 100 tokens and around five or 600 tokens, a little bit smaller, um, but with the idea that with a slightly smaller token and key value based extraction, basic fact based answering, looking for numbers, values, and dates, the model can be pretty accurate actually in generating the kind of results that, that you're looking for. Um, you will see, and again, as we flip through this, it's probably not going to be perfect, um, but for, for a testing and experimentation purpose, we've actually found that these models are quite effective and quite useful just to validate if an overall workflow and an overall use case seems to be something that's viable. Scrolling through it again, you can see most of the answers are right. So that's a, a, a positive. It does some good things here, like identifying SVP as opposed to senior vice president. Um, but then what we're actually gonna do, um, we gave it a few summaries. Um, and what you can actually see is it's generating fairly coherent lists of bullet points based on the facts um, in, in a summarization context as well. So we clicked through in this demo really quickly uh, 20 plus um, quick inferences. You can see it ran locally on a laptop in about 100 seconds. Um, you can also see sort of the good and the bad of where the model is accurate, where perhaps it, it could have done a better job in answering the questions. As with all models, there's always some work that goes into prompt engineering, fine tuning and making sure that the way you're framing a question, the context that you're passing are packaged in the right ways to optimize and get the best possible results. Um, with that, um, we will conclude uh, this tutorial. Check out the code. Please feel free to adapt it. Adapt some of the questions to your use case. And we hope that you have some fun experimenting with these models. Thanks again.